from Ball State Unified Media, this is NewsLink Indiana. Good evening and welcome to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Samantha Johnson. And I'm Allery Wheel. Thanks for joining us. Well, Ball State students and fans are still chirping loudly after pulling off a stunner in South Bend last night. Yeah, that's right. The win over Notre Dame is the first over a ranked opponent in more than a decade. Chris Robinson is live with a look at the impact of a win like this. Ball State men's in action again uh, Saturday night against Valparaiso here in Worthen Arena. Fans and players alike hope to keep the excitement going after last night's win against Notre Dame. This win comes uh, against the Irish. It's the first win against Ball State in the last nine meetings between the two schools. The win avenges the last loss that came 32 years ago. With a score tied at 77, Taylor Persons hit a three-pointer with less than two seconds left, giving Ball State the three-point win. It's the first win over a ranked opponent in 16 years. For Ball State, it's a confident boost that will carry on through the rest of the season. I think definitely. I think it's you know it's a, a big boost for us just knowing, you know, if we can play like that, you know, as together and you know, play with that that toughness and that greediness, whether we make shots or you know or don't. I think you know we can compete with almost you know anybody, and um, we'll give ourselves you know a really good chance to win a lot of games this year. We talked with Associate Athletic Director Sean Sullivan, who says phones have been busy today people calling in to buy tickets for this team. He added that you can really feel the excitement surrounding both the men's and the women's basketball programs. The women's team beat Purdue on Monday night, uh, keeping their unbeaten score, and it's the best uh, ever start for women's Ball State team. Live in Muncie, Chris Robinson, NewsLink, Indiana. Ball State will play Valparaiso at home on Saturday. You can visit ballstatesports.com forward slash tickets for more ticket information. You know, Sam, I think that the basketball team is feeling pretty grateful that they play an indoor <laughs> sport. Yes, and the heat better be on and we're in this weekend because it could be a little cold. Tony Sandleben, what can we look forward to? Well, we can look forward to actually a little bit more cold, I hate to say it, but we can see outside right now 36 degrees, and that is only feeling worse when you look at what it actually feels like 30 degrees because a lot of that has to do with the eight mile an hour westward winds that we've been dealing with throughout the day a very windy day just to say the least take a look at what is coming up here it is going to be cold in the next few days we have possible snow in the forecast as well it's december ladies and gentlemen cold and snow is what to look forward to as well as your weekend forecast Thank you, Tony. And with the cold weather coming, people who don't have access to shelters or hot meals are relying on a local nonprofit. NewsLink Sarah Lehman has more on how this organization is expanding their services. Last week, the Soup Kitchen of Muncie participated in Giving Tuesday. It is a national fundraising event that has kind of come along and grown in the last several years. And they started off their day with a big goal had like a, a big ask for a dual convection oven, which was about $6,300. And they were pleasantly surprised. So we watched the tick go up, the temperature in the oven go up, and uh, lo and behold, when it was all said and done, we raised $8,000. I think I've been pinching myself since Giving Tuesday just like, did this really happen to us and uh, did we make that kind of money? Now this year marks the 23rd anniversary for the Soup Kitchen of Muncie serving people in need and they say they've seen more than in the past. Um, in July we averaged 181 people a day and people kind of move out of this area and go where it's warmer to find those day jobs and work, and uh, but we're still averaging about 150 people a day. The new oven is going to help the soup kitchen to keep up with the high demands of residents in need and serve them more efficiently. Parsons says their supplier is ready to install the oven as soon as the building gets an electrical upgrade. In Muncie, Sarah Lane, News Week Indiana. For more information on the Soup Kitchen, to volunteer or to donate, you can visit soupkitchenofmuncie.org. Some Los Angeles residents might need to take advantage of public services like soup kitchens in light of the California wildfires. The Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti has declared an emer a state of emergency for the area. 12,000 buildings are at risk of burning and 65,000 acres have already been destroyed. More than 50,000 people have been evacuated in Ventura County. Shelters are open there to help the displaced residents. 
President Donald Trump is fulfilling a campaign promise today. Trump is publicly recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He also announced his plan to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And that process of moving the U.S. Embassy could take years. Foreign allies have expressed concern that this could complicate sensitive elements in peace negotiations with the Palestinians. Trump, however, disagrees, saying that this is a long overdue step to advance the peace process. The president also says Vice President Mike Pence will visit the region in the coming days. Some U.S. lawmakers expect a resignation from Minnesota Senator Al Franken tomorrow over sexual allegations. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden tweeted today that it is the right thing to do given this series of serious allegations. Talk of an early end to Franken's term comes just one day after Michigan Representative Ron Coiner's announced his resignation. Franken's office says there will be an official announcement from the Democratic Senator on Thursday. Time Magazine has named the Silence Breakers as the 2017 Person of the Year. The Silence Breakers represent dozens of women who inspired the Twitter hashtag MeToo in response to sexual harassment. The cover features Ashley Judd, Taylor Swift, Susan Fowler, and Ta Tarana Burke. The women and men featured in this article were part of a high-profile sexual harassment and misconduct cases this year. Times editor-in-chief says that the people who spoke out about harassment have created one of the largest velocity shifts in our culture in decades. Jack and Ozzy Osbourne aren't the only ones getting attention after their visit to Muncie. We will show you who else played a top dog in the show. And the curtain is about to go up in the Muncie Civic Theater. Find out how everyone is going to get an all-access pass. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back. Muncie Community Schools will soon learn its fate. The Distressed Unions Appeal Board, or DUAB, announced that on Wednesday of next week, it will be making its decision on whether or not the district will be fully taken over by the government. DUAB will decide if enough progress has been made on the district's financial hole. The meeting will be at 1.30 Wednesday afternoon at the State House. DUAB also says it expects to live stream that meeting. Well, although the number of reported HIV cases have gone down in Indiana, the same cannot be said for Delaware County. News Link Indiana's Kelsey Dickinson reports. About 100 people dressed in red and black to attend the NAACP's All Red Affair to help raise awareness of the AIDS pandemic caused by the HIV infection. More than 1.1 million Americans are living with HIV today. It's a big problem everywhere but just, you don't see it every day. Head secretary of the NAACP chapter at Ball State, Rashad Manning, says he wants to spread awareness on the issue. 
A lot of times people ignore the fact that AIDS is still existing around the world, so just making sure that people are aware of what AIDS is and what it's capable of. Data from the Indiana State Health Department reports 137 HIV cases in Delaware County. While the report shows an 11% decrease in HIV cases in Indiana since 2015, provisional data shows HIV cases reported in Delaware County have increased by 11%. It's a problem because it's happening still, and we should be at a time that we should be able to see cases slow down versus not increasing as the way they are. Duncan says a lack of knowledge on HIV is part of the problem. People just are just not aware of how they contact it and how they pass it on. I think another one is you just don't, people don't want to get tested. They're scared. They, they don't want to know what their HIV status is. Until a solution is found to decrease the number of HIV cases in the country, organizations like the NAACP will continue wearing red to raise awareness. In Muncie, I'm Kelsey Dickison, Newslink, Indiana. For more information on HIV pre uh, prevention and services, visit the Indiana State Department of Health website at in.gov slash ISDH. After six months of construction, Muncie Civic Theater is reopening its doors this weekend. Newslink's Brittany Carlin is live at the theater to tell us more about the changes you'll see. Here in Muncie Civic Theater, they are doing renovations. And as you can see, there are people working hard, getting the last minute touches so they can fill these seats this weekend. Rather than a uh, just a simple facelift, it's been this uh, building that was originally built in 1880 actually getting a lot of the uh, the care that it's been needing. Some of the added features include a walkway from the door to backstage, platform seating and entryways, handicap accessible seating, and an elevator. Another reason to make the theater more accessible is for the Muncie Civic's barrier-free theater program. It's a, uh, a theater program um, led by our therapeutic arts director, Tristina Marie, and it's specifically for adults with physical or developmental disabilities. The program produces a show each year and gets a lot of people involved. Music therapist Rebecca Lameson helps with the shows. During actual performance time, we are their accompanists, we are their teachers to learn the songs. Anybody that has music therapy, we work on their songs in our music therapy sessions. Corey Jones has been in a few plays and really likes being a part of the program. It was cool, it, um, meeting different people, um, trying different parts in the play, um, meeting Tristina and, and... Those involved in Barrier Free say these renovations are important because it will make everything easier. We can go up to the rehearsal space with an elevator and we don't have to be like, oh well that group Somebody uses a walker, so they have to stay down here. If you don't have to think about it, that's just way easier. And as you can see, this ramp might be one of the biggest changes that they made, allowing easy access from backstage all the way out the front door. Live in Muncie, Brittany Carlin, Newslink, Indiana. Muncie Civic's first production in this new space will be Scrooge the Musical, opening on Friday. And if you thought today was cold, just wait. Tony says it's only going to get colder. We will tell you how cold in our full forecast. And find out which Ball State basketball player has her eyes her on a top prize. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
Make your emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Welcome back to News Link Indiana. Sam, it's been five days since the official start of winter, and it came in full force. It did. You know what? I think there's a little bit of snow on the horizon. Oh. So Tony Sandlebin has our full forecast. Tony, what can we expect? Well, Sam, you're absolutely right. There is snow in the forecast. December is here. Winter is here. So let's take a look. Right now, 36 degrees outside. Winds going about west, about eight miles an hour in the westward direction. But you can see what it feels like there. That wind chill brings things down about six degrees to make things feel like about 30 degrees outside. Taking a look at our almanac though, things were actually pretty average today. You see high of 42, average 41, low of 24, average 25. So really nothing too different from a normal December day, early December day. Now nothing compared to these records that we saw back in the early 2000s, but luckily we have nothing to worry about as far as that 10 degree <laughs> record that we saw way back then. Looking around the country, you can see we should be counting our blessings because it is 16 degrees in Minneapolis right now 42 in Kansas City 55 in Dallas Fort Worth 40 in Atlanta 36 again in months you can see out west is where we get our warmer temperature 63 in Las Vegas 71 in Los Angeles but let's zoom in here on Indiana we can see current temperatures around the state nothing too different all around that high 30s low 40s area except up in Fort Wayne there you can see 32 degrees 36 in Muncie 37 in Indianapolis 41 down in Bloomington and 40 in Terre Haute so not too much variety in temperatures today throughout Indiana. Looking at our radar, nothing much to talk about as far as cloud cover. We've got a relatively clear night to look forward to. Zooming in here on East Central Indiana, again, not very much cloud activity going on, so definitely a good night to possibly go out and see the stars, but make sure you bundle up. Looking at precision cast, our cloud cover comes in tomorrow morning for sure, so definitely be aware of that. It will be a little cold this morning, tomorrow morning for your morning commute, but take a look at what comes Saturday morning, Friday night into Saturday you can see cloud cover and there it is our chance of snow for this weekend first chance of snow this winter season so definitely be prepared have some uh, winter gear as far as coats hats gloves things of that nature tonight perfect example of why 24 degrees outside no chance of rain or anything like that but winds going at eight miles an hour and tomorrow 29 degrees should be partly sunny so a decent day outside as far as what it will look like but it will be pretty cold and that will be the case for the the entire seven day forecast. You can see 29 tomorrow, 36 on Friday, 33 on Saturday. And so for those of you that are going to go out to that Ball State basketball game against Valparaiso, be prepared. You might be out walking in some snow, 80% chance of snow on Saturday, Sunday, 28. Monday looks pretty good with 41 degrees as our high, but then it continues to stay cold Tuesday and Wednesday with 28 and 30 degrees. So definitely be prepared to stay warm outside. Well, like I said earlier, Tony, uh, I will break out the jacket, but I am not a fan. I am <laughs> going to be ignoring the fact that the snow is going to be on its way. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Absolutely. New Ball State is bringing back a sport after more than two years. We'll tell you which one coming up. And you may be surprised to hear what one Ball State basketball player said about the big win last night. That's next. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know, wherever you are.
Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Kristen Walmsley with your sports. Ball State's men's basketball gained a victory against number one eight ranked Notre Dame. This is the first time the team has beat Notre Dame and the first time in 16 years a program from the MAC has defeated a top 10 team during the regular season. A three point shot made by Taylor Pearsons in the last two seconds of the game led the team to an 80 to 77 victory. Previously, the team lost nine times against Notre Dame and the team is looking at the game like any other. I don't think you can really treat it any differently. Um, you got to treat it like another game and you know, just, you know, throw your best punches and, you know, um, you know, for us, I think another thing was we just didn't really have anything to lose. And so, you know, we we're going to give it our best shot, and, you know, and, you know, whatever happens, it's going to happen. So. Women's basketball senior Mariah Monaco has been named MAC Player of the Week for the second time in her career. Following the win against Butler last week, Monaco currently has season high free throw scores with a goal to keep improving. A big win against in-state rival Butler for the whole team. But for Mariah Monaco, it was her second time earning the honor of MAC Player of the Week. Um, well, I mean, first and always give it the glory to God because without him I wouldn't be where I'm at and I definitely wouldn't get the honors that I get without that. This is the second time Monaco has received the honor. From the beginning of her career, she's continued to grow. No, you know, when she came to us, she was one of the quietest kids we've ever coached, uh, you know kind of uh, introverted a little bit that way, uh, but on the basketball court, she's almost just the opposite. But through the help from the team and coach, she's continued to move forward. I mean, it's always my teammates. They're the ones that are getting me the ball. They're the ones that are setting great screens to get me open, to be able to knock down shots like that. The high intensity game against Butler didn't stop her. And then, like, your teammates, obviously, they help you all the time with that kind of stuff because they're the ones that if you start to go off, they're like, hey, come on, let's bring it back in. What's next for Monaco? I want to be the player of the year this year for the MAC, and um, obviously I know to do that I have to keep working on just the little things like rebounding, playing defense. Women's basketball is 7-0 with only a few games left in non-conference season. The team will host Southeast Missouri State tomorrow at 7 in Worthen Arena. And on Saturday, men's basketball will host Toys for Tots Military and Public Safety Appreciation Day. The event is in partnership with the U.S. Marine Corps League Mounts Detachment from Anderson and Muncie Fire Department. Toys can be dropped off at Gate 1 from noon until 3. Students who participate will get 50 student rewards points. Individuals with a valid military or public safety ID will receive complimentary admission for the game. Any fan who brings a toy will receive a specially priced bronze or silver section ticket. The Cardinals will host Valparaiso at 2. Well, I think speaking for both Sam and I, because we're very big sports <laughs> fans, it's very exciting to see the basketball programs doing so well. Definitely, for sure. It's kind of great. It's been a while since they've done this well, I think. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kirsten. And we'll have a final look at your frigid forecast coming up. And Ball State students are putting a twist on the world's most popular sport. That's next. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlo, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head.
There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Connor Miller with your entertainment news. Well, you may have heard about wheelchair basketball, but maybe not about this alternative. Soccer. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it's a game played on a field between two teams, with the object to propel a ball into the opponent's goal by kicking or by hitting it. So what about soccer that is played on a court rather than a field? Well, the Ball State Power Soccer Team has returned after a two-year hiatus. Due to low interest, the competitive sport, which uses power wheelchairs for students with disabilities, was disbanded. Junior accounting major and captain of the Ball State Power Soccer Team, Lexi Heer, says that the team ended when she came to Ball State as a freshman, and she wanted to bring it back. To get it back this year, I, I just had to get enough interest from other potential players, and um, so I found enough people to get the team back together, and that's how we got it back going. Here and her team practice every Saturday on the basketball courts of the Joanne Gore Recreation and Wellness Center. For freshman Georgiana Nichols, the return of Ball State's power soccer team gives her a competitive environment and a chance to be part of a team. I like power soccer because it's like the first opportunity I've had to actually play a sport and there's a lot of speed to it and it's a lot more than just hitting stuff. You get to learn um, like teamwork and then ball control and all kinds of other sporty stuff. Ball State's team of six players will be heading to Fort Wayne in March for its second competition. In Muncie, Connor Miller, NewsLink, Indiana. At their next competition, they will be playing teams from Indianapolis, Chicago, St. Louis, and more. Last Wednesday, a &E Network aired its episode of Ozzy and Jack's World Detour that took place in Muncie. <laughs> you're getting excited. Look at you. You're like, yeah. In April, the Osbournes came to Muncie to shoot an episode with the Muncie Police Department, where Jack is a reserve officer, and to be on the short-lived reality show, Armed and Famous. Officer Chris Wells, who appeared in the episode, says he enjoyed working with the famous father and son duo. Uh, it was fun. Um, I worked with Jack before on The Armed and Famous, and I've been able to spend a little time with him whenever he comes back to town, uh, but never had been around Ozzy before, so that was, that was fun. He, he's funny. I mean, that's, that's what you see kind of on the show is really, that, that's him. On the show, Jack said he wanted to bring his dad to the town for a different experience with the police. The goal is to get my dad to Muncie. His interaction with law enforcement has been him either getting pulled over or arrested, so this is going to be a unique experience for him. After Wells' dog Carlos sacked him, he said Jack participated in something most would not be willing to do. The dog weighs about 50 pounds and he's moving 30 plus miles per hour and hits like a NFL linebacker, so it's, I mean, it's, it's a hit, it's a hard hit, not a lot of people want to do that. The next episode will air tonight at 10 on a &E. That's all for your entertainment news, back to you at the desk. All right, thanks, Connor. So, Tony, cold temperatures, but more importantly, the snow. Yeah, that's definitely the biggest takeaway to take from this seven-day forecast here. Snow on Saturday, 80% chance, and then also it's going to be cold for the rest of the week. 28 on Sunday, 28 again on Tuesday, on 30 on Wednesday, but 41 on Monday. So we have a little bit of a break in there, but definitely be sure to bundle up and be prepared for some snow this weekend. Sorry, Mal, I know you're shaking <laughs> your head, but that's winter for you. <laughs> all right, we'll take what we can get. All right, well, that's all tonight for NewsLink Indiana. And be sure to watch Friday at noon on BallStateDaily.com or on the NewsLink Indiana Facebook page. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Have a good night. been watching News Link Indiana in high definition.